today is section 5.4. Let me skip 5.3 because it's about the exact same thing. I didn't feel there was a need to do it twice, especially since I don't really know that there's a need to do it once. But I do need you to understand what an indirect proof is. So we're going to do a small thing on indirect proofs. I think you'll probably be okay with them because you've done enough logic now that you've got the kind of background that you would need for this. But an indirect proof is when you assume the negative of the proof is true. And if you assume the negative of the proof is true and you follow that logic through as though it was the given kind of information. When you follow it through, you'll come to find out that the given that they actually did give you cannot be true. And if that's the case, we know that that can't happen because that has to be true. So since that has to be true, then we know that the original negation is wrong, which means that our original proof is correct and thus it has been proven. Um, when you are using indirect proofs, you have to be careful. You can't do them with every single thing. It all comes down to the very first negation that you make. Um, also, when you're doing indirect proofs, you do not have to do them in column format. You can do them in paragraph form, which means you just write down the information. So you write down your logic and that'll be enough. So in this particular one that I'm going to do, they say the given is that the triangle ABC is scaling. That's all they tell you. And the proof, they want you to prove that angle A is not congruent to angle B. We haven't had anything yet that could prove things not congruent. We've had lots of stuff about things being congruent, but nothing about them being non-congruent. So we can go about this one in an indirect way. Because there is a definite negation of this, there isn't something that's like, oh, they may or may not be congruent, or you can be congruent and not congruent at the same time. Since none of that stuff exists, it either is or it isn't, two possibilities, that's when you can use an indirect proof. So we're going to start by saying, <clears throat> let's assume angle A is congruent to angle B. Gonna say that it is. That would mean that <clears throat> side across from A, so side BC, would have to be congruent to side A, side AC. which means that the measure, oh, sorry, because that's how you do measure. The measure of BC is equal to AC. So two sides are gonna be congruent. <clears throat> Therefore, the triangle is isosceles. Is isosceles. However, our given was that the triangle is scaling. with no size congruent. Sorry, I went somewhere else in my head for a second. So, <clears throat> since the 
to prove can't be true since the prove no let me say it a different way that a comma is true <clears throat> Original statement Angle A is congruent to angle B can't be true We know that angle A must not be congruent to angle B. If there had been some other option, um, for example, you can't say if it said prove that that the figure with three sides is a triangle or is a right triangle. You can't say that because it's an isosceles triangle instead of a right triangle because there are other kinds of triangles that you can have. There are other options available to you. So you can't use an indirect proof for that, but when it is a definite, either true or false, either right or wrong, congruent, non-congruent kind of statement, that's when you're allowed to follow an indirect proof. Okay, so the hard part about all of this isn't following the proof, actually. It's coming up with that very first line, coming up with that very first negation. That's the part that will always trip you up, and that's the part that your classwork and homework is centered on. It's not actually on you doing the proof. It's on you taking care of the negations of them. So on page 192, yeah. I'll write it down here. Classwork is numbers 1, 5, 9, 14, and 18. And then the homework is numbers 3, 7, 11, and 16. I think you'll be okay with the negations because you've done so much logic so far. So I wasn't going to stress you or spend a lot of time on the proofs. I just wanted to make sure you had a basic understanding of what one was. Okay. Tomorrow.